Download the Storm Tracker app, powered by Laney's. Get alerts and updates straight from the WDAY Storm Tracker team with accurate weather reports specific to your area. Just search WDAY in the Apple or Google Play Store. Download the Storm Tracker app and be ready to plan your day. The Storm Tracker app, powered by Laney's. Download it today. Somebody has to stand up for victims. Detective Stabler, my partner, Detective Benson. It took a lot of courage to get up on that stand. She's not going to ever be able to hurt you again. I promise you, I'll protect you. Weekdays at 12 p.m. You're watching WDAY Extra. Hot Mike with Dom Izzo. Really? Really, Dom? No. I like what Dom's doing. Okay. Dom Izzo. Jeez. Come on, Dom. What do you think I am, a magician? Yeah, I'm fired up, Dom. What else could I say? Absolutely. I was great to get on the field, and then Dom came up to me, and I'm trying to walk away from me. I just wanted to enjoy myself out there. Hot Mike. Great job. <laughs> There's got to be some kind of intelligent question about something. Is a hot mic. Hot mic. On the networks of WDAY. You know, if it's not about sports, I find it very hard to concentrate. Here's Dom Izzo. Dom Izzo. Good Tuesday morning. This is the yeah, I'm Back at Work edition of Hot Mic on WDAY Extra at Inforum.com on the 18th of April. 2023. Great to be back. Thanks to Logan Campbell for filling in for me yesterday. I have to adjust to everything that it's a Tuesday and not Monday. So, quick forgiveness here if I introduce any of our Monday guests. It's Monday for me. Got a quick story to tell to start our show today. And uh, always a, a neat deal when this happens. And it's not. I'm not bragging, it's just that this is something, again, doing this show that is very organic because it's not the news. It's not something that was ingrained in people's viewing habits when we started doing it. Um, I went to Shields yesterday, and I give them a shout-out because they've they sponsored the show in the past, and hopefully they will again soon, um, to take the little man there. Jack Man loves going there. And to see the various animals, wherever it were, if it were the bison, bear, you name it. Um, I get stopped by two separate people there that tell me they love the show. <laughs> why I wasn't wondering why I wasn't there yesterday. Um, watch religiously or listen to our podcast religiously. So um, awesome to hear. And again, I'm not saying it to to brag. It may come across like that. Um, it it just reminds me of what we're doing. We're doing some stuff that people like, and we're gonna keep up doing that. And I appreciate for those gentlemen that said something to me yesterday. Um, that was awesome to hear. Because again, uh, it's one thing when you see, you know, if someone comes up and say, "Hey, we love what you're doing on the news," because that's there. Or if <laughs> I've had plenty of people say we don't like what you do on the Bison games. Um, or don't like you doing the Bison games, that's fine too. But that that's like that kind of television, that kind of programming is associated with, you know what I mean? It comes with it. People are going to watch the games whether I'm there or not. They're going to watch the news whether I'm on it or not. Um, this is different. I think to me, you're going to watch or listen whether you agree with what I have to say or disagree with what I have to say. And that... I appreciate. So I, I really, thanks again to the, the guys that said something yesterday. And we'll, uh, we'll keep up the good work as best we can. It's great to be back. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, knowing full well that it appears we may get some spring sports in this week uh, on the high school side of things. It only is April 18th. So I might be under the, the cut line of what I said for uh, when we're actually going to start playing games. Now for you baseball fans out there, uh, and baseball players out there, that it's not happening anytime soon. You're going to have to leave town. Heck, teams tried to go to Sioux Falls this weekend and still couldn't play because it was too cold. 
such as life, apparently. That's all, all we can do is just raise our hands up and say there's nothing we can do about it. It's just disappointing. Lots to get to today for you people that stayed up and watched the Timberwolves on Sunday night. I apologize. I was one of you. I fell asleep at halftime. Probably a good idea considering how that game played out. Um, it, it just, it, Charles Barkley said it perfectly, so there's nothing much more I could add to it. Just that the schedule makers have a perception of fans apparently in the central and mountain time zones because they have no regard for them whatsoever. Apparently it's just flyover country for them because they've got the teams on the East coast. We got the teams on the West coast and everybody in the middle just gets because you can't sit here and tell me that it benefits anyone to have a basketball game start at nine 30 central time. And 8.30 Mountain. How On a Sunday night? And then it might be Pollyannish to say, well, there are kids that want to go to the game or at least stay up and watch. I mean, what service do you do to your fans by doing that? It's just baloney. And it's going to happen again this entire week. If you are a hockey fan, if you love the Wild and you are under 15 years old, there's no way you saw the end of the game last night. None. The game got over 1 o'clock a.m. this morning. Because it started at 8.50. And we're going to have it happen again tomorrow night when the Wild and the Wolves play at the same time. We're going to have Friday's a little different because it's Friday that you can stay up a little bit later. At least I could as a kid. But there's no way you're seeing the end of these games. Heck, if you're, even if you're um, an adult like myself, there's, I fell asleep in overtime. I woke up, thankfully, before the game ended last night. And still, I'm getting up, I mean, team no sleep, but we're in the Stanley Cup playoffs and the NBA playoffs. So with that rant over, because they're not going to watch, I don't think Gary Bettman or Adam Silver is watching Hot Mike. If they are, awesome. Fix it. Um, we'll show you the wild game from last night. A crazy one at that. Against the Dallas Stars. And it started the best way you could hope for on a Kirill Kaprizov goal on a tip shot from Jared Spurgeon to give Minnesota an early one-zip lead. Watch again. That's why Kaprizov is so good. Off the top end of the stick to give Minnesota a one-zip lead. It's a 2-1 Dallas lead in the second when Matt Boldy gets in on the breakaway. Boy, he's been so good. Should be that Sam Steele who scored. Uh, on a nice pass, pass from Nyquist to tie it up at two. So we go to overtime. There is our guy, Boldy, with a chance to win it there. Jake Ottinger was awesome. He was so good in this game with the pad save there. Marcus Johansson nearly had a chance to win it. I'm watching this for the first time, by the way, folks. I fell asleep like I mentioned in overtime. I was up for this part where... Brock Faber, who's been in the NHL for all of about a week and a half, saved the game for the Wild. He saved their bacon here with the stick deflection or else Dallas wins it. Instead, we play on. And on a loose puck, Ryan Hartman down low scores and wins the game for the Wild in the second overtime. The longest game in the history of the Minnesota Wild results in a victory for the visitors, despite the fact that that the Wild got outshot in this game. Philip Gustafs makes 51 saves. 51 saves on 52 Dallas shots. Capping the longest game in Wild history. 92 minutes and 20 seconds to give Minnesota a 3-2 double overtime win. And they take a one game to none lead in the series. And ended exactly at 1 a.m. in a game that it seemed like at times they were hanging on for dear life, and they were. Remember, they're playing without Jewel Erickson Eck, who may not play this entire series, still out with a lower leg injury, even though he was skating yesterday. Ottinger was great. He had 45 saves in the game. But the Wild go into Dallas and, and get a game it looked like they had to have. Just the way that Dallas was playing, and the Wild were hanging around, they get the win. Dean Evason here after the game. 
We did hang on for a bit there. Um, you know, it was a great hockey game. The flows were back and forth. And, I mean, the overtimes, obviously, there's some unbelievable looks and great saves. And the hockey game had everything, um, you know. So, yeah, we're happy the way that we held our composure and all that good stuff that everybody talks about in the playoffs. We we did it tonight. we got to do it again. Dean, what were you, just your impressions about the Dumba hit on Pavelski and, and just kind of how uh, the, how it resulted and what it did? Yeah, you never want to see that, right? I mean, I don't care who you're playing against or you don't want to see anybody get hurt. Um, but I'm glad that we have video review um, because it does, it looks like he, you know, hits him in the head, but obviously if you watch it, the stick hits him and, um, you know, so uh, obviously we believe they got it right, um, but you still don't like to see anybody lay on the ice like that. Dean, everyone said you guys have been playing playoff hockey for months now and you've really fine-tuned your game to adapt, but to still weather the highs and lows and the ebbs and flows of the game, how impressed were you that... They asked for playoff hockey, they got playoff hockey. Yeah, and we, we talked a lot about handling the situations, and there was a lot of situations in this hockey game that our group had to handle. Um, so it's a good it's a good first step. We uh, um, That is ultimate playoff hockey. I mean, uh, the, the way that the, the everybody, their team, our team, was competing was, uh, was the way the game should be played. Heck of a win last night. And we didn't show you the highlights of the play that we Everson was asked about was the Matt Dumba, Joe Pavelski hit that happened in the second period. Uh, Dumba went up high, and Pavelski went down, head hit the ice. There was no uh, major penalty attached to it, as you heard Everson say. That does not mean the NHL may not come in with something uh, today when they look at it again. But uh, as it stands now, Dumba will theoretically be in the lineup. Who knows on Pavelski, who's already had his uh, issues with head injuries in the past. But, I mean, you look at how that game played out. And Everson said it. They were hanging on for by their fingernails at certain points because Dallas was circling the net. But that all you need when you're the visitors, all you need is to get one on the road. Now you got to hold serve at home because if you do that, you win. You win the series. And they got the ultra important one on the road. We'll see what happens tomorrow night. Um, that's the greatness of the Stanley Cup playoffs, which is fantastic compared to the NBA. Like the Wolves had two full days off before they play another basketball game. Apparently they need to get rested. I'm done with Minnesota again. Um, the Wild literally get one day off and they got to come back and play plate. A game and a half of hockey last night. They played four full periods and nearly a fifth. And they got to come right back and play tomorrow night in game two in Dallas. But a monster win for Minnesota last night. That was one of a couple of overtime games in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The LA Kings went into Edmonton and won last night in overtime. 4-3 final score there. The Hurricanes held on and beat the Islanders. 2-1 to one to take the opening game of that series. And the Bruins getting a 3-1 win over Florida uh, in the opening game of that series. The Bruins, of course, the best team in the NHL, setting a record with 65 regular season wins, uh, lead that series one game to none with four more games coming up tonight, including the playoff debut for the Seattle Kraken. They'll be in action tonight. The Devils will play the Rangers in game one of their series, which will be fun there. Hudson River rivalry. The Vegas Golden Knights in Winnipeg playing in the other Western Conference series. And the Maple Leafs and the Lightning for the third year in a row, those two teams playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Those are the games going on uh, tonight in the NHL. Real quick, uh, before we wrap up our opening segment, and you may have seen it already. If you have, we're going to show it to you again. If you haven't, the end of the Sacramento Golden State basketball game last night got ugly. And if you've not watched any basketball with Sacramento yet, get on board because it's quite the scene out there. This happened late in the fourth quarter. DeMontis Sabonis 
stepped on by Draymond Green. Sabonis had Green by the ankle. Draymond was, of course, egging on the Sacramento crowd for a while. He ended up getting ejected from the game, which clearly did not go over well with him. The end of this game was bonkers because after Draymond got tossed, Warriors have actually tied the game up, but De'Aaron Fox, if again, if you've not seen him play yet, number five is something special for the Kings right now. Knocked down that jumper with the roll. Gave Sacramento a four-point lead. Here knocks down a monster three that put the lead to six. From there, the Warriors couldn't get any closer after that. Sacramento beats Golden State again after they played a thriller. They light the beam, which is what they do after they win home games. They win 114-106, to 106 and they'll lead that series two games to none. It's the first time since Steve Kerr has coached the Warriors. They have been down 0-2 in a series. First time Steph Curry has been down 0-2 in a playoff series. That's never happened before with Game 3 being back uh, in San Francisco now. Coming up on, I believe, Thursday. They normally get two days off. That'll be Thursday night for game three of that series. As you look at what the Western Conference looks at right now. That was fun stuff. Good stuff there. And we'll see if there is a suspension coming. The the, the Warriors are such a different team when Draymond can't play. Their defense just is not good. And they have been good on the road all year long, which bore out again last night. We got a fun show coming up for you here on our Tuesday, our usual Tuesday lineup of guests. Mike McFeely will be by at 9.35. We'll chat some Minnesota Twins. They actually spent some money yesterday on pitching. Can't believe we're saying that. We'll discuss that and some college football chatter as the transfer portal is back open. That opened up on uh, Saturday, the second transfer portal window season, and there has been a Bunch of guys, 118 guys went into the portal yesterday alone. We'll discuss that coming up at 9.35. Kyle Manley by at 10 o'clock as we are into the final week of NDSU and spring ball. They'll have their final practice coming up on Saturday. See where the Bison are at as they get to, to uh, put a bow on things. And, you know, with the portal window opening, I would imagine there's going to be a few Bison that will head in. It's just a matter of a matter of fact, just holding on to guys just doesn't happen anymore. Be intrigued to see who some of those guys are. We uh, will discuss that coming up at, uh, at 10 o'clock that also big day yesterday out of Valley city, the North Dakota high school activities association has finalized the sites for the three class tournaments for next year, which includes the region sites and the state qualifier sites. We're going to get into that. Uh, throughout our show as well, because some interesting decisions were there, were made on that. Some were made consciously. Others, facilities dictated that. Availability dictated that. We're going to get into that here in just a few minutes. So, great to be back. Let's take a break. We're off and rolling here on this Tuesday. Hot Mike, back after this on WDAY Extra at Inforum.com. I'm Eric Munson. I, I've been a homeowner in Fargo for over 40 years. We completed our new home. We wanted to make some changes in the plumbing. I called Laney's and we had a wonderful experience from the initial call through project completion. Jeremy from Laney's showed up with a smile on his face, coordinated the entire project. They finished on time, on budget. The entire experience with Laney's was wonderful and I'd recommend Laney's to anyone. Eight to eight is just great. On our next show. A daytime exclusive with actress Charlene Tilton. She shot to fame as Lucy Ewing on one of the most iconic and watched TV shows of all time, Dallas. But while the world was debating who shot JR, Charlene was secretly living a nightmare. Now Charlene Tilton is opening up about the painful past she kept hidden from her fans. I blamed myself. All on the next Tamron Hall. Weekdays at 2 p.m. on WDAY, WDAZ. Join WDAY Sports for NFL Draft coverage. Live from Hankinson, North Dakota. Live interviews with NFL hopefuls and much more as the community prepares for Cody Mauk's future in the NFL. Only on WDAY Extra, Friday at 6.30.
Watch NDSU Spring Football on WDAY Extra and in Forum.com. Watch the Bison take the field at the Nodek Insurance Football Performance Complex, Saturday at 2.30 p.m. on WDAY Extra and in Forum.com. I think I'm a good estate planning attorney because I'm willing to take the time and spend the time with clients to really truly understand their intent of why they're here in our office. It's not so much just about voiding probate court, but it's more what is your intent? What's the legacy you want to leave for your children? And I believe that's the ability to listen to the clients about what their intent is. A law firm known for success. O'Keefe O'Brien Leeson Attorneys. What is your emergency? Every day we encounter people who are having the worst day of their entire lives. Does it get any easier? Nope. It takes a certain kind of person to run towards danger rather than run away from it. Why is this job so important to you? Growing up, I never saw any heroes who looked like me. And that's what a hero looks like. Help is on the way. Sundays at 8 p.m. You got lots of money over here. I want to go for it. So do I. Let's do it. You bet your life. Oh, hey, hey, give me the money. All righty. Five thousand dollars. Boosting the economy. You seriously asking me this question, Jay? <laughs> Call the island. What are we doing over here? Every weekday. Yeah, give me that money. Oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna give it to you like an Italian uncle. Here you go. You get yourself a little something there. There you go. Right there. <laughs> Weekdays at 3:30 p.m. Today, one in five working age Americans has a mental health condition. People in all types of jobs and at all levels. And the key to helping us succeed is a supportive and inclusive workplace. All of us have a role to play in making that happen. So what can I do to help? As a CEO, I can set the tone for supportive culture. As a manager, I can offer assistance and accommodations. As a coworker, I can listen and be a source of support to my colleagues. As someone with a mental health condition, I can ask for what I need to perform my best. I can offer all employees the supports they need to deliver on the job, for the team and for the business. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I can remind others that we all benefit from workplaces that promote good mental health. Mental health friendly workplaces are more important than ever. And all of us have a role to play in promoting them. Learn more at whatcanyoudocampaign.org. Welcome back, everybody, to Hot Mike here on WDAY Extra in Forum.com on a Tuesday morning. A lot of good stuff coming up today. Kyle Emanuel will come up in our second hour. NFL draft, we are closing in. We are nine days out. From the first round of the draft, excited about that and everything that comes with it. Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay have a new three-round mock draft out this morning on ESPN.com. They have uh, Cody Mauk in the third round with the 72nd overall pick to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, that's about as late as I've seen in the in the recent mocks. Um, I mean, again, it's a mock Take it for what it's worth on on that. I think is first round still a possibility? Yeah. I think are we holding on hope on that? Probably not. Although you never know. All it takes is one is what Kyle would tell me. Um, second round, I think, is a still distinct possibility. So we'll uh, we'll get into that more coming up in our second hour of the show. I wanted to spend a couple minutes here uh, back on a topic that we have talked plenty about in 2023. Uh, is the three-class basketball, which, of course, now is a reality happening in North Dakota for next season. Yesterday, the uh, NDHSA AA uh, voted on the tournament sites for next year for basketball and have approved them. This is just for 24. Nothing has been decided yet for uh, 2025. There's some preliminary sites but nothing has been officially uh, signed off. We're going to go through uh, each of them here. Just we have a few minutes because I think uh, some of these sites may surprise people. Others may not. We'll start with the boys class B. So this is the the newer of the, the, the smallest of the classes now, which will have four regions, remember, 
Um, They'll play Region 1 in Jamestown at the Civic Center. Region 2 will be played at Devil's Lake. Region 3 will be at Bismarck St. Mary's. Region 4 will be out in Newtown. The, uh, the dates for this is March 4th through the 7th of 2024. Now, remember, they're going to have state qualifier games as well to determine who makes it. One of the state qualifier game out east we played at the Shack on Saturday, March the 9th. The state qualifier games out west will be in Newtown at the casino there at Four Bears. Well, of course, the state tournament is at the Minot State Dome. So, again, Jamestown, Devil's Lake, Bismarck, St. Mary's, Newtown. The state qualifier games at the Shack and Newtown. Again, the state qualifier games may need some further instruction on how that works. Remember, the winner of the third place game plays the loser of the uh, region championship game for a chance to make state. I know some of you aren't going to like that because that means the true meaning of the B is gone, means you can lose a game and still make the state. That is where we're at. So that's the sights there. Class A, boys class A, the sights there will be Fargo. The Shack will have games March 4th through the 7th. Mayville State gets to host, which is intriguing. I want to get into that here in a second. The Minot State Dome will host games like they do in Region 6. All that's gone now. You're associated with what you know for numbers and regions is all going to get blown up next year. And Kildare will get some games as well. Kildare will host Region 4. Again, the state qualifier games because they're going to be double headers that day. Fargo and Newtown will host. And the State A is at the Fargo Dome March 14th through the 16th. A reminder on that, again, I've had people ask me, why isn't the Shack hosting it? We asked that question when uh, Justin Fletchock was with us last month. The state believes that the Shack is not big enough to host what they believe is going to be a widely attended event. The new This is the new Class A, so this is the middle division now. Meanwhile, for the girls, girls Class B will look like this for their sites is they're going to have Jamestown again host, Devil's Lake, Kildare will get Region 3, and the Minot Auditorium will get Region 4. Mayville State will host a qualifier, as will the Minot Odd out west with the girls' B is in Jamestown. And then the girls' Class A will come to Fargo for the Shack. Mayville State will get a region as well. The Minot State Dome will host Region 3, and Region 4 will be in Beulah, and their great gym out there. And again, as you mentioned, Mayville and Minot will host the qualifiers with the State A girls being played at the Minot State Dome. Now, here's the caveat. You're not going to see, you don't see NDSCS on there. Doesn't mean Wapit and can't, but they will not host any games. You don't see... The Betty on there, which I know has been the longtime host of Region 2. And there's a reason for that. So next year, the NCAA calendar in 2024, everything moves back a week. Because we have an extra week between Labor Day and Thanksgiving. Meaning... The NCAA basketball tournament is a week later, which means the college basketball season is a week later. So venues that are traditionally available, like the Betty, are not because we are still in the middle of the Summit League basketball season by then, running headlong into the girls' tournament, the region tournament. So... That's why you're not going to see the Betty on there. That's why you're not going to see the Shack as well host the EDC basketball tournament next season. That is going to be, it's listed out right now as multiple sites for the East region for the boys and girls for the EDC. Because the Summit League schedule, we're still playing regular season games 
that weekend, the weekend when they play um, the EDC tournament, February 27th through March, I think it is second. That's the last weekend of the Summit League schedule next year. So therefore, the Shaq's not available to them. Like we made it work this year um, because they they played games, gosh, it was um, on a Friday, I want to say, for the region tournament. That just is not going to work. So while they would love to have that, it's not going to happen. Bismarck Event Center keeps its normal dates. Um, they're not working around that, obviously. They'll have the West region still at the same time location and then of course they're going to host the double a next year out in bismarck but that is uh the dates for it well i want to get a little bit more into this interested in what people think about um the sites i think mayville getting into the rotation is a great deal louis Lee fieldhouse is fantastic they've done some renovation there as well i think uh, that will be well attended Kildare getting into the rotation is interesting to me beulah as well Jamestown has hosted region tournaments for as long as you can remember. We're going to hopefully have uh, president of the Jamestown Civic Center on sometime this week because I'm interested to get their thoughts on, A, what they need to do to get ready, uh, if anything, uh, if they need to get ready for um, the state basketball tournament coming there next year. And now multiple region tournaments coming as well. We'll get more into that coming up later on in the show. Uh, we'll get some people's feedback on that. We'll take a break. We come back. Mike McFeely will join us. Lots to chat about, as always, with Michael. We'll do that on a Tuesday morning edition of Hot Mike, which returns after this on WDAY Extra and Inforum.com. The Dragons Digital Network is here to bring you live coverage of all MSUM Dragons home events everywhere you want to watch. DDN combines all streaming options of the MSUM Dragons, NSIC Network, WDAY, and Inforum. All the games, all live on social media, smart TV apps, mobile apps, websites, and more. So however you like to watch, the Dragons are there on the Dragons Digital Network. Put me in, coach. Batter up. Sonny Anderson spilling. And then a little bit of a... <laughs> Her tasty ballpark food menu. Nacho skins like you've never had them before. Then, how did Mark Summers land his iconic double dare gig? Those words changed my entire life. Isn't that incredible? Plus, it's cutlet night. Oh, what a gorgeous meal. Next, Rachel. Weekdays at 3 on WDAY WDAZ. There are places, people, and conditions in this world that almost seem beyond hope. But not when Mercy Ships is there. Mercy Ships is a place restoring sight to the blind, normalcy to the deformed, beauty and happiness to the outcast, and joy to the brokenhearted. And many times you can almost see the life coming back into them. <laughs> Can't be that. Mercy Ships is the largest floating civilian hospital in the world, staffed with some of the most skilled volunteer medical professionals and crew. Mercy Ships is the reason why hope is now in sight for those who need it most. To learn more, go to mercyships.org today. This is a murder mystery of epic proportions. get this picture of a jealous guy thinks she's got a lover and bang she's dead what possessed you to do that could this be a murder for hire when you've got something that was this bad somebody's got to pay dateline weekdays at 1 p.m love me tender love me sweet Never let me go You have made my life complete And I love you so Love me tender, love me dear 
Mr. McFeely. I have seen the future, and he was wearing number five, and I ain't talking about Robbie Grimsley, folks. Took out the muffins, took out the trail mix, took out the cookies. They stole the monster cookies. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. Let's do some broadcasting. Yeah. Yeah, it's this time as Mike McFeely joins us on a Tuesday morning. Uh, we always love a good scandalous story in uh, Bloomington, Illinois. Oh, we're not, going right to there. Yeah, oh, okay. absolutely. Why not? That's just terrific. Well, I, I talked about it on Friday. You wrote about it this weekend. Yeah, terrific is the great word for it. Uh, if for people that forget or didn't see the story, um, Kyle Brennan, the Illinois State Athletic Director, resigned before actually the story came out that uh, he, his top lieutenant, were uh, lavishly spending money to go to the Big Ten football championship game in, in 21. 21. Yes. And uh, their top donor flew them there, who the top donor is under federal investigation for yeah, his company. For tax evasion. Evasion. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it's it's. Part of, it's the trip, quite a story. part of the trip included a trip to a strip club as yes, well. Yes, the Red Garter. So, which, not familiar with that. Which sounds wonderful. <laughs> Apparently. And uh, Very cla- and if you saw the photo yeah. on the... On <laughs> the it's a brick building. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the public radio station in Bloomington did the story. Yeah. Great job, by the way, on yeah. the story. Good um, reporting. And they sh- included a photo of the Red Garter. <laughs> Looks very classy. Yeah. It, I mean... Oh, man. Very classy. And uh, he uh, is out. He resigned. Not sure if he was going to get fired. Maybe. Well, he thought so yeah. because he resigned, <laughs> he resigned even before the story came out. And that's the power of journalism is that they reported the story yeah. and it led to uh, his well, resignation. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, what are you well, that's, thinking? That's, it's really strange yeah. that, 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 first of all, they hooked up with this guy who, the the is it? Aaron Rossi, yeah. which a name that means nothing yeah. other than he's apparently an Illinois State graduate or an Illinois State booster who made a ton of money off COVID-19 testing kits, kits. during yeah. the pandemic because they became the go-to testing kit. The guy made a gajillion dollars. And I remember when the story came out that Illinois State was Going to build an, a quote a quote unquote indoor practice facility. indoor practice yeah. facility. It's actually a bubble, it's a bubble. Yeah. which is whatever. That's, that's you, fine. you, you yeah. do what you can do. You afford what you can afford. He gave him three million dollars. He gave him three million dollars, which was a significant gift. I don't know if they've seen any of that money yet. Yeah. And the construction started. Obviously, they started. They stuck a shovel in the ground like immediately after announcing that they were going to yeah. build it. Yeah. And I don't know this Aaron Rossi guy had most of his assets frozen because he's under federal investigation for tax evasion and other alleged misdoings, wrongdoings, misdeeds, yeah. wrongdoings. And so I I don't know where it stands. But if you read the story, and if you, you know, my, my column's on Inform, and there's a link that to, to the, the actual story. original yeah. story. I mostly just kind of rewrote, frankly, the, the article and credited them and added a little bit of my own commentary. But... It sure sounds like th- this Rossi guy called him up and said, let's go to Indianapolis let's for the go, title let's game. Let's go to the Big Ten championship game. And huh? these guys said, <laughs> and they uh, went. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Sure. Yeah. I mean, because they literally booked the tickets and stuff, bought them the day before. <laughs> Yes. And so they spent eighteen thousand oh. dollars in tickets on one hundred level tickets. So that's, we're talking excellent level yes. field at, level at, tickets at uh, Lucas Oil, Lucas Oil Field Stadium. Yep. Stadium. Yep. And then they get a bunch of hotel rooms at a Hampton Inn, which is you know, I mean, it's a Hampton Inn, but yep. they, they spent like five grand in hotel rooms. 
<laughs> at the Hampton Inn. And God. then they, you know, went and did their partying and everything else. And then they went to the Red Garter at two o'clock in the morning. And, and and it just it just the whole thing sets up like this guy said, let's go do this. Let's talk about this big gift I'm yeah, gonna give. Right. And the, and whether the athletic director and his lieutenant said, My God, we have to do this, because what if this guy doesn't give us pulls the money? The, right, pulls the plug, right? And then shortly after this trip is when they announced that the guy was going to give us $3 million. Yeah, yep. So the whole timeline is laid out that Ugh. the guy called him and said, let's go to Indy. Yep. And they had a big party, and the, the athletic director got caught up in it thinking he had to get this money. And then the guy said, all right, I'll give you the money because we went to the Red Garter. You know, give me give me a few ones, <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> you know, and then... What a mess. What a, Then it comes, yeah. and somebody obviously let somebody at the radio station yep. know what was going, going on, on. Yep. and they oh, open records oh, it yeah. and, and uh, god and it turned out to be the I, I mean, story you wrote about like the money is at some schools is a drop in the bucket not in illinois state that is a no. that is a considerable yeah. amount of money yeah, i mean there. this is a bit you, know, you know building an indoor facility and and again it's a bubble, but that's what they have. That's what they right. can do. Correct. And you and I mean, Brock Spack's been begging for yes, something. Yes. They've been practicing on their basketball and, and, floor. And, and Illinois State is, despite the reputation, and they got it was ten years ago when they got to the championship game. It's it's an underfunded football yep. program, just like most of them are, in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. I mean, they Brock Spack is a guy who, like everybody in the Valley, for the most part, except for maybe South Dakota State, looks at NDSU and says. God, they're feeding their kids year round. Yeah, they're giving them cost of attendance. Someday, and just use I would presume is going to somehow get into the NIL area and do that. And all these other schools like Illinois State are going. What are we doing? What are we doing yeah. here? Yeah. I, you know, what are we doing yeah. here? We and, can't compete. And so, we, when a guy offers three million bucks to you know <laughs> sort of cap off the the bubble, you fly to Indianapolis you and do go to the Red yeah, Garter, I guess. Doing, yeah. But what a but what a terrible. And I wrote about this, but I mean, if you're at Texas A&M, I'll bet there's a lot of stuff oh, going on. Heck yeah, you know, yeah. There, there's a lot of strip clubs in the in the Texas A&M, <laughs> or the you know the old Southern Methodist world where you know who knows what was going on mm -hmm. there, and you hear some of the recruiting stories. Yeah, right. But when you're at Illinois State, yeah, I mean, do, no, if you're the athletic director, don't you go? Wait a second. Yeah, this this doesn't seem like a good idea. It doesn't, it doesn't pass the spell and, and test. And I know there. that this guy has a lot of money, but we and, and he wants to give it right. to us. We got to put a line but, but somewhere, right? May, may, should we maybe pump the brakes yeah. a little bit because this guy is he's a high, thinks he's a high roller, yeah. and we don't we're not sure if we want to get caught up in this guy's in the world this of guy's this guy's orbit, right? right. And we do we, do we mean, want I mean, to be owing this guy I mean, anything? I mean, th again, three million dollars is a lot of money, yeah. but but it's. It's not worth that. I mean, it's th there's other ways to get $3 million eventually. I mean, it, it took NDSU forever to raise the money for the shack. Right. And it took them forever to raise the money, or, not for, but a, a, a good period of time. 18 months, yeah. To, to raise the money for their yeah. indoor facility. Yep. And so, I mean, it, it sucks, but, you know, you, I think you, at some point you have to sort of say, you know what, let's, you know, we don't need to take the money. This, uh, Unless it's a hundred million dollars right, for a hockey yeah. arena, and even though the guy has Nazi memorabilia and throws Nazi-themed mm, parties, that's a lot. Not great. I don't think you're understanding the size of the check <laughs> that Ralph Engelstead is going to write. But anyway, just on Brennan, by the way, I was told this as well. When he was at Utah, he took the AD job at Montana State, was formally introduced, then went home and backed out of that, oh. and didn't take that job that went to um, Leon Costello. Now yeah. was at SDSU. Yeah, yeah. And took that. So I mean, he's had he's had some interesting decisions, I guess, maybe to say in the past. Yeah. But his I mean, strength was fundraising, right? That's why he was, that's hired, why he was there. hired because that's the name of the game in college athletics. Obviously, is it it, it ain't about <laughs> it ain't about a lot of things that no. it, that we think it used to be about. It's no. about money right now and oh, raising God, money yeah. at a Division One school, <laughs> particularly. What a mess in Bloomington. That's uh, that is not great. Um, I wanted to show you this i'm sure you saw yesterday and our friends in uh, in fcs football that uh the 
the Ace Sun, remember when we did this yes, whole bit, yes. they were going to launch, we're going to have our own league, we're going to eventually gonna be FPS. FPS. And the WAC said the same thing well, two last, years yeah, ago no, we did well, this last, whole thing. But last winter, the WAC came out and said, oh, we're going we're to go FPS. <laughs> and everybody else went, well, that's not how it works. You don't just oh. declare you're going FPS, because oh. otherwise everybody will. Right. <laughs> so yesterday, statement news came out that they are forming their own league together yeah. now. Um, Which is smart, right? I, you're right? In this day and age, absolutely. Because I don't know both, because both didn't have enough teams really right. to be their own league. So they will. Uh, I can't even remember the name of this now. What is it? The United. What is it? The United Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. Yes, the UAC. UAC. <laughs> the UAC. And it will comprise these teams that you see on your screen now: uh, Abilene Christian, Austin P, Central Arkansas, Tarleton State. Eastern Kentucky, North Alabama, Utah Tech, that's our friends formerly of Dixie State, oh, yes. Southern Utah, and Stephen F. Austin. They will combine for one automatic bid. They'll only play six league games against one another this upcoming year. That's just for um, one year, Just though. for they'll, one year. Yep. They'll, they'll play a full round robin starting in, uh, in 2024. But this does alleviate one more automatic bid, so it'll stay at 10 Next yeah. year, Mike, because the Ohio Valley and the Big South are also combining. So I think for we had this, and you and I both have, we did podcasts about it. We have written about it, said it about it on this show, that there was the potential of trying to expand the tournament because there were more automatic bids going away. It right. seems like we're going that, that's, the no, opposite that's, way that's, now. They're, no, that they're done with that. That, that we're back to we're 10 back now. To, we're back to, it's, it's going to stay at 24. Right. I, I actually heard a podcast yesterday that's it's about a month old that Sam Herter did with the athletic director at Eastern Kentucky because the Eastern Kentucky athletic director is on the same committee that Matt Larson, uh, Matt is, on, Larson the is on the FCS playoff committee. The yep. FCS playoff yep. committee. And, and I can't recall the gentleman's name, but, but he told Sam, we're happy at 24. That's, that's sort of, you know, they must've been listening to our show. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> Um, 24 is the number, man. Uh, but, but not now the talk, and, and what's going to happen, it's not just the talk, what's going to happen is by this fall, they're going to come up with some way to avoid the bidding mm. issues. They're going to either seed 12 or 16 teams, and that that's the push now. That's right. the focus as opposed to expanding the playoffs, which was all about, by the way, the Missouri Valley and the Big Sky being ticked off because the fifth-place team in their league, wasn't getting a bid. Yep. That's what it all came down yep. to was Tom Wistrell and Patty Viverito, maybe under pressure from their members, likely, because that's their job, right. is to represent, yep. their, represent their membership. Their schools. Yep. And, you know, the, the fifth-place team in the Valley was saying, well, well, you know, how come Eastern Kentucky's getting in and we're not? And so instead of just saying, get better, <laughs> win more games. <laughs> Don't be 7-4. and four, Don't be 7-4 or 6-5. Six and and five, six and five. Five. Right, right. And so, but uh, we're moving away from that now because Thankfully. now there's 14 uh, at-large bids. That's plenty. That's again. That's still. <sighs> yeah, it's I, I would many. still argue it's yeah. too many. <laughs> totally you right. Know, but be this as it may. These schools that we just brought up on the screen. I mean, on e Austin P wants to do it. I know. Moving. I mean, is this overture dead in terms of hey, we want to be FBS football or who are you uh, of who any of these to? of any of these schools when you oh, look no, at it? I, no, I don't think I don't think it's dead because I, it's what we talked about. I think last week, Dom was it. It, it ain't about yeah. brand What's or about where you're at or yeah. you know success or even budgets. I mean, North Dakota State has a budget and it's what thirty million dollars, which isn't big by FBS standards, right. but it's. With all the facilities, the budget, the potential, the market, the money in yep. this town, the money in this state yep. with ag and oil, and then all the stuff going on, everything is there that, that NDSU would be a perfect addition right. to a mid-major league or, or a G5 league, but we're 100,000 miles <laughs> from anywhere. And so and you look a, at those, a, in those schools, a, a Stephen right. F. Austin or a Tarleton Texas, Texas. or a whomever is just a more attractive yeah. option than North Dakota State. Yeah. And there's another school coming in, another one in Texas, Rio Grande Valley. will yes. start play in 25, I believe it is. They'll play FCS football. So add them up. There's how many more Division One schools we're going to have? I think 24, 25 Division One schools in Texas. Yeah. Yep. And so and that's it's all about yeah. geography and bus trips in the sports that are not football. Right.
Let's take a break. We come back. The Twins spent some money on pitching yesterday. I, I almost passed out when I saw that. We'll discuss that with Mike and much more. We wrap up our one on a Tuesday morning. We're back right after this. Join WDAY Sports for NFL Draft Coverage. Live from Hankinson, North Dakota. Live interviews with NFL hopefuls and much more as the community prepares for Cody Mauk's future in the NFL. Only on WDAY Extra, Friday at 630. Watch NDSU Spring Football on WDAY Extra and Inforum.com. Watch the Bison take the field at the Nodak Insurance Football Performance Complex, Saturday at 2.30 p.m. on WDAY Extra and Inforum.com. I'm Tyne Morgan, host of U.S. Farm Report. Join me right here each weekend as we explore the news and issues that matter most to agriculture. We know each year farmers and ranchers are thrown challenges, but as agriculture continues to adapt, we are right there with you. From markets to weather, we take a deep dive into what matters most to agriculture and rural America. Saturdays at 6 a.m. In this job, you take your eye off it for one second. People can die. Go now! Don't think. Just do it. Gonna get her out. Here we go. Hey, slow breath. I'm a firefighter, and I will always be a firefighter. Did a great thing to do. It's all because of you. Weekdays at 7 p.m. and 12.05 a.m. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in North Dakota. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the NDHSAA. It's been said that when someone you love has Parkinson's, you have Parkinson's. The truth is, Parkinson's disease doesn't just affect the diagnosed. It affects everyone who supports and helps care for them. Worldwide, over 10 million people are living with Parkinson's, a neurological disease that affects movement. And with so many places to search for information, it can be difficult to know where to begin. The Parkinson's Foundation has answers. Answers for everyone in the fight. We can help you understand the disease, help you find expert care, give you tips for living a better life, share the latest research, help you find local support, and there's a free helpline you can call. Find your answers and join us in the fight against Parkinson's. To learn more, please go to parkinson.org or call 1-800-4PD-INFO. The Parkinson's Foundation. Better, Better lives, lives together. Overcoming drug addiction was difficult, but I found the path to recovery that worked for me. Treatment helped me come to terms with the issues in my life that caused me to use drugs. And I found better ways to cope. Learning I had a substance use disorder helped me realize I needed to make a change. The road to recovery is different for everyone. There were good days and bad days. But I found strength in seeking help. My friends and family made a huge difference in my recovery. I never gave up. I found my path, and I keep walking it every day. Find the path that works for you. Learn more at cdc.gov slash stop overdose. All right, wrap it up. Hour one with Mike McFeely. Headline from the Star Tribune. Twins sign richest pitcher contract in franchise history. They give Pablo Lopez four years, 73 and a half million dollar extension right after the heels of him pitching a, a brilliant game in the Bronx. The, the twins couldn't score any runs for him. Um, I almost passed out when I saw this. The twins were well spending some money. Speaking of almost passing pitching. out, let me, let me, before we get to that, oh. I want to get this off my chest. Is There's a monitor right to my, to my yeah. right here. Yeah. And every time I come in and look at it every week, my hairline in my head has less hair on it. 
And yeah. so it's, I, it happens, right? I mean, I'm looking, yeah. I mean, but I swear to God, like two years ago when I started, my hairline was like down here. <laughs> This is the most depressing hour of, or half hour of my week. I walk in here and look at this monitor and go, who's the old? Oh, God, that's me. Would you rather us just, like, put up a, a, a blank slate? I'm going to start something? wearing a I'm going to be like Costanza <laughs> and, and, and wear the toupee in here. Like, hey, hey, guy, what's up? Hey, hey. And so it's just, uh, I, it's sort of. I'm I mean, really sorry about that. Well, I, you know, I, I, I mean, when, you know, whenever I leave this earth, I <laughs> what you should do is put together, like, a montage of my appearances on this program like from you, the very you start time lapse of yeah. how we did it <laughs> I mean, see, like, like even there i have more hair what's happening to me look at that i mean that's a that's almost a shock of hair right there and now it's, oh, I'm, I'm looking man. like look like cold pack now <laughs> look at that i'm bald oh you're not Oh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of depressing. I'm sorry Anyway, about that. okay, I just... Oh, God. Anyway, what were the twins? I, I, who cares? Who the, cares? <laughs> you have, like, a... I like the time-lapse idea. That's pretty good. Just, you know, have... have you know, just, yeah. just wild-haired Mike. <laughs> like, 2010, here I am with this. Whoa, what a head of hair. Look at that. He had it permed. He had so much hair. And now, like, and now in this, 2023, yeah. it's like, oh. like a cue ball. Like, what, what is this? Oh, oh. man. Yeah. Yeah, Pablo How Lopez. The <laughs> <laughs> this guy is fantastic. Oh, God. He's been all right. My wife asked me the other day if I ever wore a, a, a visor golfing. Uh, I said, How could I wear a visor? My head would be a piece of bacon. I mean, what are you talking about? She's like, Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I forgot about that. I, wasn't I don't think she forgot about yeah, it. I think she's, I think she's taking a shot purpose. at you. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, kind of the way she, you've yeah, met her. That's the way yeah. she is. <laughs> Pablo Lopez. Heck of a oh, signing. Gosh, I, too, was shocked. Twins are good. Twins are good. They'll be fine. They split in New York. Yep. Uh, I mean, you know, it, the funny thing is, is Twins fans are like, oh, we, we could have won three or four. It's like, you won two. Two, yeah. You won two in New York. If if you split in the road and win two of three at home, it comes out to like 95 wins. It's all right. So Do that. if you split yep. at Yankee Stadium... Yep. Shut up and take it and and run. Yes, L L Pablo Lopez has been good. he's been what the Twins have needed. Yep, absolutely. Like every team needs guy at the top of the rotation, and Rocco Baldelli is letting these guys go six or seven innings yeah. and throw a hundred pitches. Yep, and it we've talked about this, but it feels like real baseball. Yep, again. we've we've gotten away, at least the Twins have gotten away from this. Let's have a guy pitch two innings to start the game right. and take him out after four innings and just. Ugh. And he's the perfect age. He's twenty seven. I mean, that's yeah. that you're in the prime of when he can be really, really good. It's one of those trades that has worked out for both sides. I mean, Arise went and hit for the cycle last week for yeah. the Marlins. I mean, it's, well, that, that was the other thing is that I mean, I think it's worked I, I, out I'm, for I'm both. I'm on Twitter too much, obviously, but but the Twins fans going off on Twitter over Luis Arise hitting for the cycle, it's like, you know what? The Twins, he, he's a great player right. and everybody loved him. Where are we going to put him, though? But, but, you have a number one pitcher right. now. You traded, and you got yep. a prospect. Correct. I mean, I'm not going to say they fleeced them. I'm going to say it worked out. Like worked you just out. Said it worked out for, for both, both teams. teams. Walk away from that. Say right. all right. We did pretty. We yep. did good I on mean, this. The Twins right? got a, a number one starter. Finally, uh, email comes in. Ask Mike, how big a deal is it? UND getting Eli King in the transfer portal. For those that missed it, oh, we haven't really talked good. about it yet. Yeah, no, that's that's a so huge. So Eli get. King, Caledonia superstar in high school, had numerous football and high major basketball offers, yes, went, lots of them. played at Iowa State, wasn't playing enough there, went to the portal, and Paul Sather gets him to, to come to Grand Forks. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, Big deal. Paul Sather, midway through last season, was looking at being fired. It was I mean, not going it well. It was not going no. well at all. They what were like 0-11 or something in the league, in the league. or something. They were bad. Um, and ended up playing better at the end of the year. Yep. Shortened his bench. Uh, the young guys that he had, the true freshmen like BJ Omot and Trayson Eaglestaff, started playing really well. Yeah. Uh, the the transfer uh, Jalen Trent played really well at the end of the year. Yeah. Um, they still finished ninth in the league. They still went. They won a game against a terrible Omaha team and then got boat raced by Earl Roberts down in Sioux Falls. But say they got an extension, and Omot's coming back. I think sort of a surprise. Uh, Eaglestaff's coming back. They've added now uh, this kid from Caledonia who was a really highly sought after high major guy. He was a Mr. Basketball finalist yeah, yeah, in the yeah. state of Minnesota. And the Gophers offered yep. him uh, Nebraska, 
Big Ten, Big His 12 His football schools. offers were also really yeah. impressive, too. Notre and, Dame and Stanford were and in so on him. And so for him to go there, and apparently he played AAU ball with yep. Omot and Eagle Staff. Correct. Um, and plus, they got, they're they going to be okay. They're going to be upper half of the league. That, that was my next question. That I, changed your prognostication oh, of where you uh, yeah. have them for next year. Yeah. I, mean, I think I, the absolutely. summit is wide open. You you agree with that for 2024? Yes. I, I think I think you and I were texting the other day. I actually think NDSU I could think the be the, have a heck of a chance. Could, could be the favorites going in. Even without Grant Nelson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because they, they Andrew Morgan's a, a post that a lot of teams don't have. SDSU is, but in the transfer portal era, <laughs> you, you just don't know who's. I mean, South Dakota could retool in yep. a day. South Dakota State could retool in a day. The Oral Jack, Roberts yeah. could retool in a day. But there's, there's no way Oral Roberts is as good next season as they were this last season. Right. Just, there's no, no way. They just can't do it. Both the Jacks and ORU got transfer commits. ORU getting a player from BYU. The Jacks got a seven-footer from Wyoming that played this past season. So, yeah. I mean, take that for what it's worth. I mean, like you said, that could make them I mean, in, instantly in, better. In, in the old days, yeah. you know, it just... <laughs> It, it, I mean, South Dakota State and Oral Roberts would be, you know, 5-20 and 20 next year. But right. now it's... It ain't working that way nope. anymore. Lastly, I saw this story, and uh, I think you and I were talking about this. Um, I know you retweeted it, that our old buddy Gene Taylor is going to have to be spending some money here pretty soon on his uh, football coach and his men's basketball coach. But that's the price of doing business. Some, K-State has never been at the top of the Big 12 for their football and men's basketball no. coaches' salaries. He's going to have to pay Kleiman quite a bit, and he's going to have to pay Jerome Tang well, quite a bit already, here. He's already paid the assistance. It, Kleiman's you know, assistance he did. Kleiman's yep. assistance All he did. over a million uh, raised there. Yep, and so, but yeah, I mean, the basketball coach Jerome Tang is there. Kansas State was good. They made it all the way to the Elite Eight. Yep. yep. And so they're going to Climbing won the Big 12 championship. Yep. It's and comes... so it's. But that. But but if you're Kansas, if you're any university like a Kansas State, you'll take that. Oh. I mean, you know. Yeah. You're, you're going to win the Big 12 and get to the Elite Eight. You're going to play Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we have to pay the coach. Okay. Yeah. Sounds but, good. Especially now because I think Leipold's getting more than Climbing. That's the Kansas coach. Yeah. That you have to do that. Yeah, if you're Gene, yeah. that's uh, that's a no brainer. And on we that knew one. Chris Kleiman when he was a humble <laughs> defensive assistant at North Dakota State who was escaping Northern Iowa. He was telling me he wasn't watching playoff games against when he actually secretly <laughs> won. So I didn't watch that game. Yeah. What? No. <laughs> They're no good. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Chris, uh, what do you think about Kennesaw State? I yeah. don't watch those yeah. games. I, uh, I don't have time for uh, that. Press conference ends. Did you see that game? It's like <laughs> what? What are you, you just told me about? you didn't see it. What? You told me nah, you got, uh, you're in the bubble. Let me yeah. one thing. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for coming by, bud. Great yes. to see you. There he is, Mike McFeely, joining us each and every Tuesday. We'll come back. Kyle Emanuel will start hour two with us on a Tuesday morning. We're back right after this. Pressing. On our next show. I can't see <laughs> A daytime exclusive with actress Charlene Tilton. She shot to fame as Lucy Ewing on one of the most iconic and watched TV shows of all time, Dallas. But while the world was debating who shot JR, Charlene was secretly living a nightmare. Now Charlene Tilton is opening up about the painful past she kept hidden from her fans. I blamed myself. All on the next Tamron Hall. Weekdays at 2 p.m. on WDAY WDAZ. Send your weather-related photos or video to the WDAY Storm Tracker team. Contact weather at WDAY.com or share them with us on Facebook and Instagram. Keeping an eye on the sky, the WDAY Storm Tracker team. News happens at all hours of the day and night. Stories develop and situations change in the blink of an eye. In our community, knowing where you can turn at any time of the day for clear information and facts is more important today than at any other time. That's why we start our day in the middle of the night to gather new information and be ready to bring it to you. Tracking what has changed overnight and how that will impact your day today. We're here for you with the most up-to-date news and weather to get you on your way because your community is our community. There is a road laid out for me. Boxes everywhere. And this is going to be Addie's room. I am blind. Did you feel like, like it? I hope so. Yeah. I know this road is there for me. There is a love way. First night here, but Amy seems cool. You. Way down by the river. <laughs> I got this. If I'm really take me down to the river and wash me.
Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. Here's my resume. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's a lie. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, it's, any real world experience. it's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water, to disconnect. And some days, maybe, it is. But you've never been interested in easy. Reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Do you want to meet a family with a transgender kid? Here we are. Max loves to do backflips. Max loves to play his ukulele. Max loves to just be a kid and just be himself. When I found out I was pregnant, all I really wanted was a happy, healthy, whole child. And that's what I got. I think it's really important for people to know that trans kids don't have a political agenda. They are just kids. Like any parent, we love our kids unconditionally and we will never stop fighting for them. Stand with us. Protect our families. Come on, babe, let's go outside and take the boat up for a ride. I'm ready, I don't want to wait. Get on board. Got the sunshine and the short line. It's a good time. Get on board, get on board. Get on board. This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. Kyle Emanuel takes it all the way. Upended at the 35-yard line. Emanuel. Kyle Emanuel. We love this player, the way he plays. Man, this guy makes plays. Is set by Kyle Emanuel, the winner of the Buck Buchanan Award. That goes to the best defensive player in the country. It is a great time for football as we're on the uh, doorstep of the NFL draft, which is a cool nine days away. Just uh, We saw this from uh, Brandon Bean, the general manager of the Buffalo Bills, saying that DeMar Hamlin has been fully cleared to resume playing football. You were on the show with me the day after that happened, now three and a half months ago. Um, that's unbelievable. That is. Yeah, I, you know... <laughs> You get caught up and you kind of forget that we kind of forget about that yeah. whole thing and, and everything that went down there. But yeah, I, I think there was obviously a lot of question whether he would play, whether he would want to play. That was the question I had asked me. Do you think he'll want to play again? And I think that was pretty answered pretty soon after that he wanted yeah. to be back. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's going to – him and, and his circle, they're going to know better than anyone in terms of just talking to doctors. I would I would assume – if it were me – now it's – I mean, you think he's only like 24. Right. But if it were me at 20, I mean, if, if a doctor is giving me the full bill of confidence, like, hey, been cleared to resume full I mean, activity, yep. then I could see it. But I would still think, I think that would have to sit in the back yeah, of your mind yeah. for quite a how while. Does, how does it not? For quite a while. Because yeah. um, it was such a fluke thing and such a, I mean, yeah, such a crazy, scary, I just, scary I deal. It technically, I mean, it could happen again, yeah. right? I mean, obviously it's rare. We don't, we've never seen it before, but. I think that would be in his mind. I think he's going to need a couple of games. I would think a uh, couple of big hits. Yeah. Um, you know, you hear quarterbacks talk about that sometimes when they come off of the offseason. Just off want to get hit again. Get some yeah. of those hits yep. and, and to feel yep. confident again. But, I mean, either way, it's uh, Awesome great news, news, though. It's, yeah. it's just from you and I sitting here doing the show that Tuesday morning, not knowing if he was going to live to get to this spot, yeah. just says a whole lot about the medical professionals there that saved his life. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, mm. we talked about it a lot that day, but, I mean, they – they literally saved yeah. his life. I mean, he wouldn't yep. be here, and now he's, you know, now we're talking about him playing football. So unbelievable. Awesome news for yeah, him. that's good stuff to start our show. Um, I'm looking at the latest mock that Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay put out from ESPN this morning. They have Bryce Young at number one. He's canceled all of his other visits. Heard that. So it, I think it's self explanatory here. He's going to be neither one or number two. I think that he, he's got that intel. I, yeah. You would assume, I, right? That's one thing I, in the, in the age we live in, it's been this way for a while, but I almost don't like I wish there was a little bit of a surprise yeah. factor. It seems like every year we know, because for a long time, it seemed like it was going to be C.J. Stroud, 
And now last year was a little surprise. Tra- remember, Trayvon Walker wasn't true. Aiden Hutchinson was going to be the guy, and then but draft like, day that but changed. Exactly, draft day yeah. we still yeah. found out, yeah. and it's like, and if you you're, are, you're Vegas, saying it's seven o'clock on, I'm saying I don't want to know. Night? I okay. want it to be up in the okay. air. Like even I think when Baker Mayfield went one, it was a little bit of a shock. But like the day of or day the day of, before, Schefter like, broke that. that day, I remember like, that that oh, day that happening. Baker was going to be the number one guy to the Browns. No, I think it'd be fun. I almost feel the same way about like the Heisman Trophy. I feel like every year you're almost maybe you don't know. <laughs> even the, like the week leading up but the night of you're like yep, yeah it's going to be this person that's that's there you're, you're very accurate on that there are very few surprises in anything in sports that's why yeah. when something like that when something does surprise us it's the biggest thing ever that's why you know? i almost like i almost in terms of the first round like i almost like when you get later on and you get some of these wild or trades, you get a trade that's those, it that's to me yes. is more appealing of the draft now is when somebody is willing to give up the farm to move up or if there's going to be a player for player swap, which has happened right. now in the draft. Yeah, we saw it. Uh, was it AJ Brown yes, last year? Last he gets year. traded yep. on draft night, like kind of came out of nowhere. Correct. Obviously, it worked out very well for Philadelphia. Out okay. Like, those are the, we like a little drama yeah. in our sports, right? I mean, that's why people tune in. It's kind of like reality TV and you just, like, in the actual game. And I think we kind of like that in, in the draft I, as well. I, I just feel like, at least at the top, you seem like. I think the drama is with know. Anthony Richardson, honestly. That's where too. that's where it's going to be, of who's going to draft him and who's going to move up, so to speak, to go get him. Yeah, I'm more excited for, for him and Levis just to see where yeah. they end up because to me, and maybe I just haven't been paying attention, it seems like they could go as high as three or four. Mel's, or got, him at, Mel's got him at four, Richardson four to the Colts, and Levis out of the top ten, which is now all the right. way down to 11 with the Titans here. Yeah, and I think early on, I think he had him. I think he had He's one, in two, the top three, five, four. yeah. So yep. that's always, uh, I don't want to wish that upon anyone sliding and having to sit there and the cameras on you constantly after every single pick, but that kind of adds a little bit of drama yep. too. Like where do these, these next two quarterbacks end up? Cause with Anthony rich, I mean, I could see him going as high as three. Well, probably not to the, obviously not to the Cardinals, but I mean, if someone trades says out, the Cardinals are going to have that pick, there were right? some rumors yeah. that I'm um, rumors that the Vikings are now kind of a, a quarterback team. What do they do? Do they wait at 23 and take someone like Hendon Hooker, or do they do they make a move and trade? I mean, that, those were some rumors that were yeah. flying around. So what, Arizona is a, seems like a dumpster fire right now. Yep. I, I think it makes sense for them to trade out per, personally. I mean, just to get yeah. more picks and to kind of solidify a lot. I mean, they, there's been all over TV a list of all the people that they lost, from J.J. Watt retiring to all the free agents that they lost. And it just seems like they got a lot of holes on that team. Now they have Kyler Murray and a – I don't want to say a bad contract, yeah. but who says Hopkins is going to be there? He's they're yeah. going to move him. You'd have it to imagine, right? Like he's yeah, he's going to be there. So to me, it makes sense at yeah. that to, at three trade out, get get a uh, compile some picks, right, and give yourself a chance. Maybe not this year, but at least moving forward to uh, you know put. Uh, I like what the Bears have done. Like there. the Bears traded out of one, yep. they got a bunch of stuff. They Spend already have their quarterback. They spent some money, like. Who knows that Chicago and Detroit did the same thing with trading golf or excuse me, trading uh, Stafford for yep. golf. They got how many picks they get from the right. Rams and I, they're still Two dining out. Three. They're still dining out on that. Yeah. They and are. golf's been okay. Seen a lot of teams take advantage where they make a trade and then all of a sudden you come into the next yeah. draft or, and you're like, oh, wait, how do they have that first? Right. Oh yeah. They're they made a trade well. and they're positioned yep. well. Um, I want to talk uh, some buys and guys in the draft here. Last since you were here, Noah Gindorf had his own pro day on Thursday. The Lions brought two coaches, including their tight end coach. You and I have talked about that when we did the the pro day show the last couple of years. That to me is a that's a pretty good sign, right? It's if your scout is one thing, but if you're bringing an actual position coach, that must mean they think highly enough of you. I would think so. Yeah, I would think you're you're aligned, right? Your scouting department and your coaching staff, you're now aligned with like, hey, we. We really like this guy. Like coaches do their their own scouting as well. Right. No, they're not going to do as much. They're not going to fly around as much as a scout. But like they're going to do their own homework as well on yeah. some of these draft prospects. And if you if you're bringing a tight end coach as well as a scout, you would think that they like something. Now, I know you get tired of me saying this. It doesn't <laughs> mean they're going to draft Correct. him, nope. but it at least means there is some interest there. They obviously wanted to see how the ankle is doing and and the health of of Noah Gindorf and. From what I've seen, you know, obviously things I think went pretty well. You're seeing him here. I mean, going out, this is the first time we've seen him on the football field since the Arizona game uh, last wild. September, <laughs> and he wasn't 100% then. Right. I mean, literally the last time he's been 100% was December of 2021, that first playoff game against Southern Illinois. But when he is right, he's 
an NFL player. I, I believe that. I do. I do too. I think there's there's so much value in that tight end position in in terms of do you want a receiving tight end? Do you want a blocking tight end? Do you want a little bit of yeah. hybrid of both? Tight ends also contribute. I know I talk a lot about special, special teams, teams and yep. things that they can do there. Um, he's definitely got the NFL body type. He's, I think he's proven it when he's healthy. Unfortunately for him, he just hasn't been healthy, right. which, you know, the, the old saying like availability is, is more important than uh, ability. Yep. You got to be out on the field. And unfortunately he just hasn't been, but I'm excited for him. I'm excited for him to get a chance. And he's obviously going to, who knows if it's going to be drafted or not, but either way, he's going to get a chance. And if he's healthy, I think he's going to perform well and teams are going to see the value that he can bring. We had Jim Nagy on the show Thursday. I asked him about all three of them. He was had glowing things on, on Hunter Lipke saying it, and it's not necessarily has to be Kyle use but he also mentioned you just brought about Lipke's ability to play special teams because of his athleticism yep. is so unique that that will rise him on draft boards. He said he couldn't see him getting out of the fourth round on Hunter. I I don't know if I agree with that yeah. necessarily, but I agree with it in terms of that's where I think he should yeah, go. Right. I, I think he, uh, depending on the team, now you're not going to draft a guy in the fourth round just for special, special teams, teams. But when, when you add that element in, you add everything else he can do offensively. It makes sense to me. I mean, I don't think he should get past the fourth round. I think he's proven he's healthy. I think yeah. he's proven he, I thought he looked really good at pro day. Yeah. Um, looked like Looked like he's been in the weight room. Um, and that's why I think it's not, like you said, it doesn't have to be just like a Kyle Juszczyk. You don't have to draft him to somewhere that runs the same offense like San Francisco because he can do anything in your yeah. offense, first of all. And second of all, like you just said, he can add that value on special teams on any team. Any team right. is going to want a guy who's 235 pounds and can run the way Hunter Lipke can on on their team. Doesn't matter. doesn't matter your offensive skills or whatever. Like you right. want a guy like that. You can fit him in. That's the coach's job. Once you get him in the building, figure out where he's going to fit in. I see. I just look at him, what he is able to bring onto a team. And I'll ask this of you because, I mean, you're not that far removed from playing. How many of the 32 teams still actually employ a traditional fullback? And I use quotation marks, but off the top here, is it even half that still do that? Trying to, well, the three teams I played in played on all did. Yeah. Um, we had Derek Watt. Uh, Alec Ingold was um, in the with with the Raiders. Um, now some of them were special teams aces. Derek Watt basically that's what he did, and that's why he got a second contract with the Pittsburgh because Steelers. he was so good at that. Yeah. So most teams I would say still have one. Yeah. Now do they use them as a traditional fullback? Not not really, but they kind of you know it was almost similar to what I was doing with the Chargers in terms of like we had a base package where I was the linebacker that was in. Now most teams are going to run. They're going to have at least a few plays in 21 personnel when you mm. have two backs. You're going to have a few. When you get to the goal line, you're going to have 22 personnel, 23. Per, like, you're going to have certain times where you're going to want a fullback right. on the team. Um, now, how often they use them, that depends. That That's going to depend on the team, but that's why we, like I mentioned, like most people do have a fullback, and at minimum, they're contributing on all four special teams. And I look at, you know, C.J. Ham just got another deal from the Vikings. Yep. They're the, Obviously, they use him almost exclusively in that role where he's I've been a team captain now that he's right. elevated himself enough to that spot. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't think teams, if they're doing their due diligence, I don't think you should look at Hunter Lipke as hmm. a fullback as a traditional yeah. fullback. Like well, like what I was just talking about. I don't, if he were on my team in the NFL, I wouldn't be like, Oh yeah, he's just our, our fullback. I would look at him as yeah. okay. He can be our second or third running back. He can be a tight end. He can be our fullback. He can do the special teams and everything. I just don't think you should look at him that way, personally. If you want to get the full value and the full everything out of what Hunter Lipke is as a football player, you yep. shouldn't look at him that way. And that's why, you know, Coach Hens described him as a football, football player. player, which is an all time favorite. Real quick before we wrap up, um, McShane Kuyper have Cody Malkin, the 72nd overall pick to the uh, Tennessee Titans in the third round. He's got Tucker Kraft, who picks higher to that at 70 to the Raiders. What do you make of, uh, of that? That's early third round for Cody Malk there. Yeah, I, I know we talked about this last week. I don't, I don't really understand. I mean, it's it's not a bad spot to go. Let's no, be I mean, honest. Third it's round, not, yeah. it's not, a, yeah. not bad at all. Um, I've just, I'm not sure where, where he. I don't want to even call it sliding, but we were talking about him at the end of the first round, yep. early second round, and I still think that's a possibility depending on who you talk to and look at. I mean, a, a lot of people have have had him rated in a top five at the tackle position for a long time, yep. and I just think he's done everything well throughout this entire process. I don't think there's any injury history there. Like there's nothing to be concerned about there. Um, so 
I'm not sure yeah. why we're all of a sudden we're talking about him in the third round where he was projected early second round, late first round, because he's done everything right. And right. we we saw him at the combine. We saw him at pro day. I mean, we saw him at senior the senior bowl, bowl. Right. Did everything right. Um, but again, it it matters. It does matter where you get drafted, but it doesn't Until, at the same time. Right. And the day after it doesn't though, doesn't right? I after mean, that. Your, your contract is going to be slotted differently right. based on where you're drafted. Obviously, if you go in the first round, you have that yep. fifth-year option. I mean, there's different things that happen um, money-wise. But in terms of, like, him being on a team and him showing his value, like, I'm not really concerned whether he goes in the first round or the sixth right. round. Like, he's going to show the teams what he can do. And I think, again, we've talked about it at length in, in terms of, yeah, if you don't, if you need a tackle, great. He'll go play tackle. Yep. If you don't, if you need a guard, if you need a guy that's a swing <laughs> Or you can play center, guy, you, can play you know? Any, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's... <laughs> His athleticism yeah. and, and the fact that he was a, a tight end before this, I think, bodes well for him in terms of just showing, like, I can do whatever you want, and especially the movement. We've talked about the movement and his ability yeah. to pull around, get to the second level. He, he's going to be a, a very valuable yeah. pick for wherever he goes. We'll take a break here. We come back. The Bison are wrapping up spring ball on Saturday. We'll be there, actually, for the final spring practice. We'll chat about where we've seen from the Bison from the last month and looking ahead to – the actual off season, which will begin Sunday for Matt Ince's team. We'll do that when Hot Mike returns right after this. Join WDAY Sports for NFL Draft Coverage. Live from Hankinson, North Dakota. Live interviews with NFL hopefuls and much more as the community prepares for Cody Mauk's future in the NFL. Only on WDAY Extra, Friday at 6.30. Watch NDSU Spring Football on WDAY Extra at Inforum.com. Watch the Bison take the field at the Nodak Insurance Football Performance Complex, Saturday at 2.30 p.m. on WDAY Extra and Inforum.com. Before choosing someone to help with your Social Security disability claim, ask if the firm is from the Red River Valley. Ask if your case will be handled by an attorney. Ask if you will meet your attorney before your hearing with a judge. Or just ask for the Schneider Law Firm. From disability to workers' comp and personal injury, for us, it's about results for you. Call 877-740-2525, the Schneider Law Firm. There's no fee unless you win. My son had a full-blown asthma attack. It came out of nowhere. The unsettling thing about some symptoms is you don't always know what's causing them. He had a reaction triggered by cockroach allergens. Threats to your health can come from unexpected places. Get the facts. Visit pestworld.org. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. The end of hunger and poverty starts here. Your gift of an animal from Heifer International can help a family with food and income, all while caring for the earth. Heifer International. Learn more at heifer.org. For children fighting critical illness, it can make the stars align. Because when we come together, hope and joy will shine. Help us make every wish come true. I'm Naheem Hines, running back for the Indianapolis Colts and proud supporter of the Muscular Dystrophy Association. My mom was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy when I was 14, and I watched her struggle. But MDA helped her get the best treatments and care, and they also help kids like my buddy Ethan. My name is Ethan, and I'm 12 years old. Thanks to the Muscular Dystrophy Association and people like you, I have more hope than ever before. From day one, they've treated me like family at my local care center. MDA is the only one that funds over 150 care centers across the U.S. to help provide state-of-the-art care for adults and kids like me. For over 70 years, MDA has been transforming the lives of people living with muscular dystrophy, ALS, and other related neuromuscular diseases. They fund the research for breakthrough treatments, care, and cures. And MDA provides support to thousands of families like mine and Ethan's in communities like yours. Thanks to MDA, kids and adults can live life to its fullest. Join us and learn more at MDA.org today. Federal investigators blame human error for a deadly natural gas explosion. We all remember where we were that morning. We could actually see the smoke from our farm here, which is close to 20 miles away. It started to pull right off the bat. Both tractors just kind of started to spin out, and those are big tractors. So I knew something wasn't right. Out of nowhere, I just heard a big boom. The tile plow ruptured into the pipeline. 
Once the gas got through the intakes of the tractor, this is when it ignited. As soon as I heard that boom, I started running as fast as I could. The ground literally started erupting from my feet. They were highly respected and they were good at what they did. And it was one of those accidents that when it was done, made people step back and pause. If an accident can happen to them, it can happen to anyone. Watch the rest of the story at 3secondslater.org. And remember, Farm Safe starts by contacting 811. Welcome back, everybody, on this Tuesday morning. Back with Kyle Emanuel here is uh, the Bison will officially put a close on spring football on Saturday. You'll actually see their final practice here on WDAY Extra. Our coverage will begin at 2.30 on Saturday from inside the indoor practice facility. It's been an interesting month, I'd say, for Matt Ince's team, which uh, will, won't do the traditional scrimmage. It's certainly way different from the old green and gold game that you played in for uh, four years' time. The position battles are still going to be there. We, we knew that. We weren't going to get any definitive answers this month. But what I am intrigued is some of the positions that are up for grabs, the players that are playing said positions, led by now a, hard to believe I'm saying this as a senior, is Cole Wisniewski, who has been getting exclusive reps at safety. He's 6'4", 221. That's a huge safety. It is a big safety. Um, and, you know, we were just talking to the break, you know, maybe you just, you want someone who's played significant snaps yeah. on the field to at least have some reps there at safety. Cause outside of that, I mean, you, you lose three guys that played a ton last year that are no longer on the team. Um, maybe you just want some experience back there. Maybe you're just, you know, like hey, he's got linebacker down. Let's, let's give him a shot. Let's give him a, a chance to learn a little bit more of the defense. You know, when I was playing, and I'm sure it's still the same way, like middle linebacker and strong safety, like we're two of the toughest positions mm -hmm. mentally. If you, if you know those two, you're probably going to know the entire defense back to front. Um, so give him a chance that, you know, he's, he's a bigger body. You can roll down in the box as a safety to kind of be that fourth linebacker, maybe match him up on tight ends in certain situations. I don't know if it's, you know, we won't probably know or find out until maybe game one, if this is going to be something <laughs> like permanent where yeah. you do it in every single package, I would assume it's more on rundowns times. We want to play man to man. Um, but that remains to be seen, but I think it is yeah. interesting. I mean, it's such a wide open position and, and like we were also talking about, like we haven't seen that at the safety position in a long time. No. He's going back before I was even here. Yeah. So way back in the day, <laughs> uh, you just, you've always been really solid at the position yeah. and I'm not saying they won't be again this year, but it's just, there's some question marks there that maybe we haven't had uh, in, in quite a it, while. It has been almost handoff. Like you knew at that spot, the buys were going to be really, yeah. really good. I mean, from when you got here, that Christian moved there, Dudzik was there playing with Colton Heagle. That started in 2012 because Christian played cornerback in yep. in 2011. But 12, it was it was Heagle and Dudzik then for the next three years. Bobby Ullman came in and played safety when when right. Colton got hurt in 2012. But those were the three guys. And then Robbie Grimsley came in as a true freshman, and he was going to be played forever. The lights yep. out. He played 60 some or 50 some odd games. And then Hendricks got moved back there, and he was Jimmy Football playing with Michael Tutsi, who's been there now the last four years. With a guy like Dawson Weber, it's it's literally the baton has been right. handed off, and I don't know who's going to take. Now I I will vividly remember 2018 spring game, maybe the last one they had. Tutsi came up with a pick six in that game, like, and he was climbing. Looked at me, and goes, "That's the next guy." Maybe that'll happen. Maybe that has happened, but you got to be good up the middle. The Bison, I thought, were average to below average at defensive tackle and middle linebacker last season. And that's, and they were awesome on the back end. Curious how that's going to line up in 2023. I, yeah, I am too. And I think I don't have got any of those answers yet. Yeah. And it, you probably won't. Yeah. And like you said, there's position battles. There's only 15 practices. So how yep. much are you going to really figure out? It's going to be more, you're going to win those position battles in fall camp. Most likely this is going to give you maybe a leg up, but yeah, it's last year we were talking, you know, a little bit about linebacker. We were talking about wide receiver, yep. Um, we didn't talk a ton about defensive tackle, but we, you know, it was one of the, but now it's, it, it became it that safety. after Eli got hurt. Right. I think we were, that was certainly a, a storyline we hit as the season went along, but yeah, you're, I mean, safety's to me, Matt Ant said it, we're going to find out who's going to play safety at the first opening press conference of the spring. If that doesn't get your ears up, I don't know as a Bison fan, I don't know what will, frankly. Yeah, and like you, you know? said, it's just, it's been, it's been a position you just knew. Yep. Uh, and maybe we didn't know with Michael Tutsi, but he proved it very quickly. Yes. 
he, uh, I think, you know, within a couple of games, you're like, okay, yep. this is going to be a yeah, guy right. that can play this position for a long time. And he did yep. for, for very well. And now you got, and like you said, there was, even when there was that handoff, it seemed like there was that veteran on the other side, whether it was the strong or the free safety, yep. whoever it was like, okay, maybe you're just trying to fill one. Like, I don't know the last time you know, we've been talking yeah. about filling both. And it's just, it's just not something we're used to here at NDSU. And it's, you know, that's, there's always going to be question marks going into every single season, yep. but um, this hasn't been that position for a long time. I am interested when things wrap up on Saturday, we now have this second transfer window that opened uh, last Saturday. They'll go to April 30th. Invariably, there will be players that leave. That's after that. When do you get a full? I don't know if you ever get a real sense of what the roster is going to look like, but you probably have a good sense then. All right. This is where I'm at on the right. This is where I'm at on the depth chart. If I haven't ascended high enough, then maybe sometimes the coach is telling you, hey, this is where you're at. If you're not happy with it, maybe it's time you look somewhere else. I think, yeah, when I when I was playing, obviously the transfer portal wasn't there, but yeah. the, I think coaches always did a really good job, especially after spring ball and once you got into fall camp of just letting know exactly where you were. Telling you, tell, is, telling you yeah, straight. This is, exactly, this is exactly how we see you. Yeah. Now, my position was always, uh, you know, I don't know if I was told, like, you're going to be a starter at any point, but it was like you, you rotated. You knew who was going to be kind of yeah. in the rotation. Um, but, yeah, it, it, the transfer portal is just a whole different world. It's still, we're still deal. talking about it, but um, is there a position, you know, even after spring ball where this coaching staff looks at the roster and says, okay, we're, we're willing to, to go grab someone. I think you else. have to, I think you really, you have to be open to it. You, you can't, you it, cannot, sure. right. You cannot be closed minded to say, well, we've got 20 some odd kids that are going to be here in June as true freshmen that we're going to just roll with that. You cannot be, in any any sense of that, if you want to be a winning program and embrace yeah, that I think, idea, I think you have to embrace it to a certain point, yep. right? Now, not no teams are going to embrace it at different levels, and uh, right? Some are going to go and say we're going to take thirty transfers and go with it, and, you know? and others are are not. And right. I think, and I would, if I were a head coach, I'd probably be in the mindset of we're going to take the right ones, which is kind of how NDSU is is approached the whole right. transfer portal. Like if we, like you said you can have a lot of freshmen that you feel really good about. And we love this recruiting class and there's going to be some really good players. But like when you're talking about the here and now, this is something that college football didn't have before. Correct. If you didn't, yep. if you didn't have a veteran that had played before you were just left with whatever you had, you couldn't, it's not like in the <laughs> NFL where you just go grab a free agent who's out there on the market. Like, but now it's like that a little bit yep. in college football. And if you need to fill a hole, it makes sense to go. The, the only time the I remember football. happening, even in your playing days was when Andre Smith came in or Harris, sorry, Harris came in. That was in May, I want to say. He was a grad transfer that came in that helped you at defensive back. Right. That was the only time I can remember just in that era where you could go and make an addition right. like some that. Some grad transfers. There's some right. JUCOs like Chad Wilson and John yep. Pike came in, and, and there was there was that element of it. Correct. But it wasn't this whole gigantic market where you just go out and say, oh, look, let's look at the transfer <laughs> portal and kind of go grocery shopping a little bit. just wasn't the yeah. same. Um, you have that. And so that's why I think you have to embrace it a little bit to at least take advantage of, I mean, the rules are there, they're in place. Um, if you can take advantage of it, why not? Andre Martin is who I was thinking of. My apologies on that. By the way, before I go, did you see, I mean, you've already talked about in your show, the new Herbie Husker that was unveiled. No, I haven't seen can it. I show this to you. This is the new Herbie Husker that was unveiled. What do you make of that? I'm trying to think what's <laughs> completely the different. Last, of, the last update occurred the, in 2003. Uh, that looks more like the one that I remember growing up a little bit. Now, I know <laughs> they they change it, and there's Little Red, and there's Herbie Husker, yeah. and there's like 10 different ones. Um, <laughs> little little rebrand. I mean, they got to do uh, something different right. there in Nebraska, so why not, why not give it a chance? With, give it a shot with the mascot and see what happens. I was following this just because I was going to talk to you. Matt Rule's been on it with the high school guys already. For 24 and 25, actually 25, he's already started in the state of Nebraska. That's good. good Finally, sign, right? I feel like we've been talking about that too in the state of Nebraska forever. Like, well, we why? thought that was going to be it with Frost. Right. Like Frost was going to close the borders he's a Nebraska down. Nebraska right? guy, and he's going to get yep. everyone. And he didn't even look at, uh, I think, Zane Flores uh -huh. going to Oklahoma State. You didn't even give him a, a chance. Like, it just doesn't make nope. sense. You have a four star quarterback in your own backyard, and you don't even look at him. Um, so I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm now, suppressing my expectations <laughs> until they actually well, go out. Well, here's one. It. You'll be, you know, interesting. Grand Island, uh, big kid, Joseph Stein, who's got a bunch of FCS offers. I think the Bison actually in on him as well. He doesn't have a, a, a Husker invite yet, but he was invited to the red-white game this coming Saturday. So at least if he blows up, then at least you, hey, you made some inroad there with a guy that potentially 
Yeah, could make something. Yeah, there. you you would hope so. I think. <laughs> And this is such a different generation of Nebraska high school athletes, too. Like, they're no, not no. like me when they were really little and they remember some <laughs> national championships. Like, these kids yeah. were born, you know, after 2000. Like, they, the last national championship game was 2001. They probably weren't even born yet. No. Um, so, th- there's – I don't know if there's, like, that die- – I'm sure there, there's still some diehard Nebraska kids that grew up, but, like, they don't remember the glory days no, anymore. they have so no I think, right, I think, nothing of that. I think you have yep. to work a little bit harder, yep. especially if you – no scholarship different but like if you want to get some of those key walk-ons to avoid an fcs school kind of like myself like if a a good fcs school comes in and offers you a full ride scholarship or come walk on and in in my opinion it was like well i didn't at the time like i might never play and i'm gonna leave college with some debt or i can go to ndsu worst case scenario at least i can get a good education and not have to pay for it right uh best case scenario is what happened um it's i think it's a little bit tougher for them they also are in on a four-star Gatlin Bear from uh, Idaho, four-star wide receiver. Boise, Michigan, Nebraska, Oregon, TCU. At least the Huskers are in that conversation. I'm, they may not get them, but those are guys that they haven't even had the chance to get in the, in the doorway. For sure, and they, they're they in on, uh, and I don't think he's made a decision yet, uh, Dylan Ry- Ryola, yes. uh, yep. who's whose dad was an All-American, or uncle, I believe, was an All-American That's right. at, uh, at Nebraska. Um you know, they've never been in the, at least for, it seems like forever, they've never been in the conversation <laughs> for a five-star recruit like that. Now, he'll probably break all our hearts and go somewhere else. Um, but at least he's given but us a little right. bit of hope. Exactly. It's great to see you, man. We'll see you on Thanks Saturday uh, yeah. up at NDSU to wrap up spring ball. Kyle Emanuel joining us here on this Tuesday morning. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll dive back into the state tournament uh, basketball sites. Have some more football chatter as well. We'll do that when Hot Mike returns on this Tuesday morning. We're back right after this. Hi, we are Louie and Becky Thrash. We have lived in our home for about 20 years in Fargo. From the beginning to the end, Laney's was great to work with on any project in our home. Our air conditioner went out, and of course it was during the summer. We called Laney's, they scheduled us a date and time. The great news for us, we got our service done earlier than expected. The two technicians were very nice, and the job was done before we knew it. We would recommend Laney's for any job in your home. Next ET, Woody Harrelson sounds off on Matthew McConaughey's revelation. They could be brothers. I'm glad you brought that up. Plus. Hello, I'm Clay Aiken. And I'm Ruben Sturter. And And we're we're spilling the ET. The Idol alums get real about their 20-year friendship. (laughs) So what was your first impression of me? My honest first impression of you was this guy is a Mac. Next (laughs) ET, weekdays at 6.30 on WDAY WDAZ. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. He sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. Basically, he had to relearn everything. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. We have our own journey, and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey. When you or a loved one is diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it can be tough to know where to turn. But the Alzheimer's Foundation of America is here for you. We've helped tens of thousands of people through our seven-day-a-week helpline, connected communities nationwide with information and support through our Educating America Tour. And our telephone-based support groups meet weekly, providing assistance and support to families. We do it all because of one thing, you. Join us in the fight against Alzheimer's and donate today. ALZFDN.org or call 866-232-8484. Here it is. Look how cheap it is. Go for it, Steph. Be careful what you buy online. It's finally here. Counterfeit products are illegal. They are fake and can be damaging to you, your property, and your wallet. It looks real good. I don't have a good feeling about this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh no, oh, get out! Go. Buying fake products can cost you the health of your face, skin, and eyes, or scar you for life. Real products are tested for safety. Buy the brand. Protect yourself. This message is brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council and the United States Patent and Trademark Office. You're smart. Buy smart. 
Go for real. Go for real. Go for real. Autism is a common, but such a heterogeneous, such a complex condition that describes many different individuals with different types of symptoms and different types of challenges. As a physician, I had so many questions, and unfortunately, when patients would come to me, I couldn't really give them a lot of answers. As a geneticist as well, I started to appreciate that at least for some individuals with autism, there was an underlying genetic basis, and that we could really start to understand in a much more precise way what was going on for them by understanding the genes, how it affects the brain, how it affects behavior, and how it affects other parts of the body as well. When we think about how many people we need to answer the hundreds of questions that we all have about autism, we start to need tens of thousands of individuals that have the same types of symptoms to be able to answer those questions. Join us today. Go to sparkforautism.org. Hot mic on this Tuesday morning, WDAY Extra, Inforum.com. Our thanks to Kyle Emanuel for coming by. Again, we'll have our full coverage of NDSU football's last spring practice coming up Saturday. You'll see it live right here on Extra beginning at 2.30 Saturday afternoon as the Bison will wrap up, and we'll see them again come August for the start of fall camp. Got some breaking news to share with you here on this Tuesday and when I say breaking, it is breaking, but it shouldn't knock you over unless you haven't been paying attention. North Dakota State standout Grant Nelson has officially entered the NBA draft. He posted this on Instagram just a few minutes ago. It says, it's impossible to put all this into words, but I'm going to try. It's been the thrill of my lifetime to represent North Dakota State, my home on the basketball court. I owe much to the players and coaches that have come before me. Thank you for setting a high standard. It's an honor to have worn the same jersey. Fargo will always be my second home. Thank you for making me feel like I belong. To Dave Richmond and all the coaches, we have sacrificed together and I'm proud of our accomplishments. Thank you for taking a chance on me and investing countless hours away from your families. It doesn't go unnoticed and I couldn't do it without you. To my teammates, I love you guys. There are no words to describe what we've experienced together. All I can say is you are my brothers. To Devil's Lake and the village that raised me and supported me from day one, I hope I can continue to represent us well. A special thank you to the fans that packed the sports center and to Derek Gaffman and all the coaches. You should have been, you should have been with your families, but you were on a bus on Highway 2 at midnight for us. I hope you had as much fun as I did, though. To my family, what can I say? You taught me everything. I'm so fortunate to be raised in a household that prioritized being a good man over being a good basketball player. A special thank you to Grandpa Henry for bringing basketball into our family, God and family first. I have dreamed of becoming a professional basketball player, and I'm going to continue that chase by that chase that dream by entering my name into the 2023 NBA draft while maintaining my college eligibility. It is a blessing and privilege to have this opportunity, and is thanks to all of you. Love, Grant. So there it is. Um, again, can't sit here and be surprised about any of it because it's not surprising. This is the first step. And what happens from now will be really interesting. Now, the deadline was April 23rd, so he gets this in before the deadline. That was for... Uh, undergrads to uh, declare for the NBA draft. He has now done that. Now he waits for the ultra exclusive invite to the NBA combine. Because if that ends up happening and that's not a, you know, pardon the pun, a slam dunk. If that comes about, then I think we can say probably goodbye to college. I don't think he would come back, even if it's to the portal to find another college destination. I think for Bison fans, you should read that as goodbye. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to be realistic. If you can you listen to the words of what I said, read that. That is, thank you for three amazing years. 
And it's either the NBA or it's going to be somewhere else. And now, if you asked me a month ago, I was leaning somewhere else. You ask me now, I think I'm leaning the NBA. I think from what I was told, I'm, I've asked about this, and for people that can't go on television and tell us this because they're not gonna, <laughs> they're not gonna share it. I think the feedback that he got from the surveys that went out was more positive than I think they were even anticipating. When I say they, I mean the Nelson camp was anticipating, and um, I believe now that this is. We're heading in a direction where he's going to keep his name in the NBA draft. And when we talk about how crazy the next nine days is going to be for Hankins in North Dakota, how wild is the next two months going to be for Devil's Lake? North? I mean, we're talking about two towns here that in the span of a two-month window are going to have an NFL draft pick and an NBA draft pick. That's, that's going to happen, it sounds like. I could be wrong on the latter, but I don't think I am. I think they're second round pick. I'm not talking a first round pick, but I'm talking there's only two rounds of the NBA draft that in the mid portion of the second round that his name could very well be called. I think that's the intel that the Nelson family got back. I can't say that for 100% certainty, but that's, the breadcrumbs I'm picking up on this. Be that as it may, he has declared. Now, for people that are unfamiliar with the process here, he can return to school. He has until the end of May to pull his name out of the draft process if the feedback that he gets between now and the next six weeks isn't favorable. That would be different than everything we've heard so far. If he were to do that, let's just go down that road. If he were to stay in there and for the next six weeks get his feedback and find, well, you know what, maybe my draft slot is is going further down and I'm not being as highly thought of as initially anticipated, he could pull his name out of the draft and come back to Fargo or he could enter his name in the transfer portal. Again, as I've said, and for new viewers of our show, or you have forgot what I said, I I think on the list of probable outcomes now, I'll reorder it. I think it's NBA Draft 1, Transfer Portal 2, NDSU 3. If you asked me a month ago, I would have went Portal 1, Draft 2, NDSU 3. The buys that have always been a solid three on that, folks. And again, he's, he's done. What else can you do? ask of him. I said this to several people, and I said it on this show after his freshman year here in 2021. He said, if you get three years out of Grant Nelson, if you're Dave Richmond, you consider yourself lucky because the way the portal was happening, that somebody was going to come and snatch him up. Never thinking the NBA was a possibility. Heck, it wasn't until two months ago. Two and a half months ago, this became a thing. And now here we sit and we're on the doorstep of something really crazy that could happen over the next six weeks and next two months. But for Bison fans holding out hope that he was going to uh, come back, I think this probably, I don't know if squashes it is the right way to say it, but it probably puts it to, to again, if you read that, and I just posted it on our uh, on my Twitter page, and you'll see it at inforum.com here in just a little bit, I think you can connect the dots on this, that it's probably... It's probably done. And again, it shouldn't surprise anyone. If, if you're paying attention, if you're a pie-in-the-sky person that was hoping against hope that you were going to see number four playing here next next winter, I love you for it, but it probably wasn't going to happen. And now, as a familiar phrase I like to say all the time, buckle up, everybody, because this is going to get fun. Now we'll see. And... I reserve the right to change my mind on this like I did earlier, but I, as I sit here on April 18th at 1048, we're due for a commercial break. I think he is going to keep his name in the draft. And if I'm wrong on that, well, again, we can add it to the pile of things I've been wrong on, but uh, I, I think he's going to stay in. 
So, again, the news, if you're just joining us, uh, NDSU standout Grant Nelson announcing that he has entered his name in the NBA draft with the uh, caveat of maintaining his college eligibility. And we'll have much more on this as the day goes on in forum.com and later tonight on WDAY. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll wrap up the show and get you ready for a busy Sports Tuesday. We'll do that when Hot Mike wraps after this on WDAY Extra at Inforum.com. Get 11% off everything when you upgrade your home with Tarkat Flooring. We carry durable laminate flooring, easy-to-install sheet vinyl, and waterproof vinyl plank. Pick up Vibe Sheet Vinyl for just 99 cents a square foot after rebate. Save on your favorite cleaning supplies from Procter & Gamble. They deliver quality products from brands you can trust, like Dawn, Tide, and Bounty. Get this six-pack of Bounty paper towels for just $7.79 after 11% rebate. Save big money at the Watch NDSU Spring Football on WDAY Extra and Inforum.com. Watch the Bison take the field at the Nodak Insurance Football Performance Complex Saturday at 2.30 p.m. on WDAY Extra and Inforum.com. When you watch First News, you're getting local news from a local team that understands and cares about your community. We're here for you with the most up-to-date news and weather to start your day. Because your community is our community. If alcohol builds a wall around you that doesn't let you see where you're going, that keeps you feeling isolated and alone, that makes you feel hopeless, know this. We're here to help if you want us to. It's never too early or too late to ask for help with a drinking problem. Alcoholics Anonymous, there is a way out. For more information, visit aa.org and download the Meeting Guide app. What is dementia? Is it the same as Alzheimer's? What is vascular dementia, Lewy body, FTD, TBI, and CTE? If someone has memory loss, does that mean they have dementia? Millions of Americans ask these questions every day. I did too, and I learned. My wife, Ginny, developed dementia. I didn't know what to do or what was coming next. I'm Kevin Jamison, volunteer and president of the Dementia Society of America. I'm excited to offer you a free guide to understanding dementia. It's filled with facts about dementia, care planning, how doctors can help, and ways to keep your brain as healthy as possible. The Dementia Society of America is a national nonprofit, and we're ready to answer your questions. You want to live life to the fullest. I know that. Ginny did too, and I'm confident that we can help. Get your copy of the guide. Go to 1-800-Dementia.org or call 1-800-Dementia. Thank you. I want to beat cancer. I'm going to beat it. That's no doubt in my mind. I'm going to win this battle. Defeating cancer will take all of us. Join our team to help fund game-changing research that saves lives. At the V Foundation, V is for victory over cancer. V is for victory over the odds. V is for victory over health disparities. Victory over setbacks. Victory over the unknown. V is for victory over giving up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Join our team to help save lives. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart. And it cannot touch my soul. Join our team in the fight against cancer at V.org. up the show here for this Tuesday morning. Again, the news, if you're just joining us, that Grant Nelson has officially put his name in the uh, eligible for the NBA draft while maintaining his college eligibility. This is the 
next step on the pathway to potential to him getting drafted. Um, the combine invite, if it comes likely in the next couple of weeks, and uh, that will determine a whole heck of a lot of stuff. But again, I'll, I'll reiterate this, and I think for most basketball fans in the know, they probably put two and two together on this. This is likely it at NDSU. So I, I said this during the season. I said it in our broadcast. I said it here on this show after the second half of last year of, of this past season that get out to a game or enjoy what you saw because that likely ain't going to come back around this way anytime in the near future. Just similar to how we, and I hope fans appreciated what they saw when Christian Watson was out there doing what he was doing on the Bison football field, that we did the same with Grant Nelson. And the only difference there, and I was asked about this, I got to speak at a class yesterday and asked about uh, covering him. And, um, you know, I've had the distinct good fortune of knowing Grant since his junior year of high school at Devil's Lake and seeing all this happen, seeing his first time at the shack at the state basketball tournament in the in the crazy COVID year of 2020 when he went and was dunking on Jamestown that night at the shack to Dave Richmond is sitting not too far away from me watching this happen, and he already committed to NDSU and just kind of shaking his head to that first year when they went to Kansas and nearly beat the Jayhawks, and Grant was amazing in that game, to a game in Fort Worth when they played TCU, and he was stunningly great in that game. He was sixth man of the year in his freshman season to what we just saw, and literally all this happening because a Detroit Pistons fan put a viral video together of our clips of WDAY video, and it got... It's over a million views and going strong still. And this has all happened here since the middle of January. It's just amazing. So Grant may want to maybe give a little chunk of change to the guy from wherever he's from on Twitter to make him. Uh, the scouts would have come. I just think it all happened a lot sooner than anybody thought. Just, just amazing. Let's get you ready for what to watch before we get out of here on this Tuesday. Minnesota Twins are back on the diamond tonight at Fenway Park. So they'll take on the Boston Red Sox opening game of that set. Six o'clock tonight on Bally Sports North after the Twins took two of four against the Yankees. Now they'll go against the Red Sox. Chris Sale and Sonny Gray are your starters tonight in Boston. Dick Bramer will join us earlier on the show tomorrow, but he will be back with us tomorrow. The Stanley Cup playoffs continue tonight. We've got Four more series that'll drop the puck, including Winnipeg and Vegas. That's 8.30 tonight on ESPN2. Should be a dandy of a game there. And as I mentioned off the top, the start of the Hudson River rivalry between the Rangers and the Devils. And TBS will get some hockey coverage because of uh, the multitude of games. That's a 6 o'clock tonight on TBS. They actually uh, gone you know both legs into the sporting landscape because I believe TBS has hockey on at six and then they've got the Mets and the Dodgers on tonight at nine. So um, for you that are on the Turner sports bandwagon, they're going full fledged into it with the games and they'll have that tonight. Wild and the Wolves both off today. They'll resume their playoff series coming up tomorrow. Our thanks to Mike McFeely and Kyle Emanuel for coming by. If you missed any of our show, you can podcast it later today at Inforum.com. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow on Hot Mike on WDAY Extra and Inforum.com. The Dragons Digital Network is here to bring you live coverage of all MSUM Dragons home events everywhere you want to watch. DDN combines all streaming options of the MSUM Dragons NSIC Network WDAY and in forum. All the games, all live on social media, smart TV apps, mobile apps, websites, and more. So, however you like to watch, the Dragons are there on the Dragons Digital Network. Put me in, coach. Batter up. Sonny Anderson spilling. And then a little bit of a. <laughs> 
tasty ballpark food menu. Nacho skins like you've never had them before. Then, how did Mark Summers land his iconic double dare gig? Those words changed my entire life. Isn't that incredible? Plus, it's cutlet night. Oh, what a gorgeous meal. Next, Rachel. Weekdays at 3 on WDAY WDAZ. On our next show. I can't feel. <laughs> A daytime exclusive with actress Charlene Tilton. She shot to fame as Lucy Ewing on one of the most iconic and watched TV shows of all time, Dallas. But while the world was debating who shot JR, Charlene was secretly living a nightmare. Now Charlene Tilton is opening up about the painful past she kept hidden from her fans. I blamed myself. All on the next Tamron Hall. Weekdays at 2 p.m. on WDAY WDAZ. Send your weather-related photos or video to the WDAY Storm Tracker team. Contact weather at WDAY.com or share them with us on Facebook and Instagram. Keeping an eye on the sky, the WDAY Storm Tracker team. I've been a GH fan my entire life. I love the TAM fam. I still think about the time I was at Park Charles. I don't believe it. But you can believe our shows are on back-to-back. -back. GH fans and the TAM fam love a good story. Weekdays at 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Happy Tuesday. Well, I look outside in Grand Forks and you can see the clouds are already starting to move on in and they will continue to move on in as we go throughout the day as we'll have increasing clouds throughout the day. But that's not the only thing increasing. We're also increasing the wind and shower chance as we go throughout the next 48 hours. We'll track those showers and snow showers as we move into later parts of the week before of course, we talk about the weekend forecast and how does all the shower chances and snow chances impact the river forecast? We'll talk about that coming up on WDAY News. It'll